Hi guys. Oh, great to have be back here. It's supposedly no makeup Thursday. Unfortunately, there was a mishap in the bathroom. You know, things happen. So I'm wearing makeup <laughs> on May, no makeup Thursday. I've got a great little project today. Um, on Saturday for my Facebook Live, we did a great Santa piece using paper, painting on paper and then decoupaging onto a surface. I have a really great ornament that uses the same kind of technique and I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. But before we get to it, uh, we have a winner from last week's uh, midweek video. Carla Lease. I need your shipping information, my dear, so that we can send you your goodie bag. We have a wonderful little prize pack for you. Have a giveaway for this week as well. I have a great five brush set of IPC for one of you. And I have uh, a couple of little uh, gifty items as well to send out. So three of you are going to go home with a, a great little prize. So uh, what else? I think that's about it. I think we're about ready to get started. So this is the ornament that I was talking about. He looks very involved. He has a lot of fun to do, but it, there's really not a lot of painting involved in this little guy. But what's really nice about him is that he is dual sided. So no matter which way he turns on the tree, you're going to see the Santa. These are very easy to paint. You don't need to have a ton of colors and you don't need to have a ton of supplies either. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's really simple. So I like to start with a variety of papers. Um, I'm notorious for scavenging and salvaging things from junk stores and secondhand shops and craft stores and even from your regular shopping. This was from a gift shop and they used to, these are just their bags that they would put various things in, but they have this neat printing on them. So I keep this type of thing too. Um, this one is pages salvaged out of an old book. Um, in this case, it was from a Bible. And then I have this from an old hymnal as well. So I use those. You can also use gift wrap or um, scrapbook paper or things like that. They're, you're not limited to the type of papers that you can use. Just find something that sort of fits with, with your decorating scheme for the holidays or something that fits with the, you know, the colors that you use. So this is the variety of things you can use, almost anything. Now, I've prepped one ahead. In this case, I used some gift wrap to decorate my Santa with, but I'm going to show you how to apply that. Now, I have some paper pre-cut. I'm going to actually, I think I'll use some of this, these Bible pages. And now the process is really simple. I took my ornament blank. We have these available on the website. Uh, they're also available from Sheila Landry. Um, she does remarkable woodcutted pieces and uh, her website is tollpaintingdesign.com. Great site to pick up these wood surfaces and Sheila does incredible work. The quality is second to none. So I'm going to start by applying a coat of matte medium. You can use a decoupage medium or Mod Podge, whichever you have on hand, but my preference is this Decorts Media matte medium. I love this stuff. So I'm going to put a nice generous coat on the entire surface. You want to get a good even coat on. You don't want gobs of it on there, but you need to have it even and so that the entire surface is covered right up to the edges, just like that. So once you have that on, you're going to lay your paper onto the surface. Just make sure you've got everything covered. And I don't, <laughs> I missed, there we go. And you're going to press this into place. Now, Ordinarily, I would moisten this paper. And I think I might have to do that because it is rippling. So I'm going to take a sponge and a little bit of water and I'm going to wet that paper. You could dunk it into water beforehand, but I'm going to wet it 
with a sponge simply because it is not cooperating. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to use my brayer to seat that into place firmly so that it is well and truly stuck onto that surface. Just like that. And then once you have it firmly in place, I'm going to grab your handy dandy nail file emery board, nail file, whichever you prefer, and sand the edges down and away from yourself. Don't saw it back and forth, that'll pull the paper right off. But if you sand down and away, you can do this when the paper is still wet or when it's dry, it doesn't matter. But if you use this method, that paper will come off and leave you with a nice clean edge all the way around. Just like that. Nice part with these emery boards is that you can get into the little corners and little details quite easily. Just like so. Nice. Almost done with this one. Just got a couple more places to go down around his belly, the top of his boot, just like that. And then once it's done, you just set it aside to dry. And you can do that with the, the arm pieces as well, so that you'll have all of the pieces for this ornament completely covered. So this is what they'll look like. So there is a line drawing included in the pattern. You simply draw on the details or trace and transfer them from the line drawing that's on there. And then you paint in all of the trim on the robe, then the hat, and on the sleeves with a little bit of warm white. Then the beard is done with a little bit of gesso in this particular case. There's a number of different ways you can do this, but I like doing it with the gesso. So I just take a small quantity of white gesso, this is the media, and I have just a tiny bit on my brush. And I, I went with gesso because it will retain a little bit of texture. And I want this beard to look like it has some texture. So. I'm just pulling it along and I'm leaving the brush marks on that beard. And then you can do the same thing to the mustache and I'm following the shape of the beard and the mustache, just like so. You don't really have to be neat and tidy about this. We kind of want to see all of that, that movement, that texture and those brush marks in his beard. So once you've done the beard, now we have to base coat the face. And I use a color called Cotton Candy. It's sort of a, a very pink flesh tone. I like this color for skin. If I can ever get it out of the bottle. Here we go. We don't need a lot. And I'm going to use a rigger, I think, to put this in. Now that little bit of pink is going to fill in the face. And we're just painting right over that paper. And it will, depending on the type of paper, will probably take a couple of coats, but it doesn't, this paint doesn't take long to dry, so. The fun part about doing this is that the bulk of the design work and the bulk of the painting is already done for you by the paper. And because we're doing a dual side, you have to make sure that you t carry that color to the edge as well. There we go. 
So we have the face done, we have the beard done. Now you can, while I give that a second to dry, I did something slightly different with the beard on this fellow. I base coated it with gray first, and then I just overstroked with fine lines of warm white to create the texture of the beard. Uh, we're going to use the gesso to create that in this one. So while we're waiting for the gesso to dry, let's create the texture on this robe. And I do that with some stencils. You can choose whatever you like. It, I usually look for something fairly small. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a checkerboard. This is a 1 8 checkerboard. And this is about, I want to say it's about half an inch, maybe a little more on the uh, size wise. So I'm going to tape off my stencil and leaving about a half an inch to five eighths of an inch. And let's have a look here. Okay, so, but, whoops. So I'm going to tape that off. And the reason I do that is simply to make it simpler to align things. And not only that, is that tape will attach to the surface right through that, right through the stencil. There we go. And I'm going to use a little bit of lamp black for this to put that great checkerboard in. Oh my gosh, I got paint everywhere. I'm gifted today. So I'm using a small quarter inch stencil brush for this one. And I'm going to just lightly stencil that checkerboard like so. And I'm going the full length right down onto the boot. These do not have to be perfect. In fact, they're more interesting if they're not. Now, what makes this easy to do is this, being able to line that stencil up over top of those checks. And then we'll stencil that. This would be cute with polka dots. You can pick and choose little swirl stencils. Almost any kind of pattern will work fine for this. I just, you know, I kind of like these little checks on this Santa. It's just very playful. Easy peasy. So there we have that. And we'll just finish this off right here. There we go. So now we have that little check border on his robe. You can repeat that and do it on the hat as well. And again, this is where I like. So I'm not having to correct on the face or on the robe. I can just, for those little tight spaces where you don't, so you're not trying to wash it all off of the, the other surface. Pretty, pretty. There we go. So I have checks on the hat and the robe, and I have a little spot where the paint went up onto the paper, and I can just take a wet brush and clean that excess off right there. So I have the hat and the robe done, and we'll just quickly do these do these cuffs on the robe 
on the sleeves. I'll line it back up like so. With checks, it's so easy. Anything significant like checkerboard or polka dots, very easy to realign things. There we go. So now we've got that sleeve you can see how he's going to fit together quite nicely. So give that a second to dry. Our gesso is almost dry. So I'm going to switch to a small angle. I'm using a, a 3 8 angle for this. And who knew I'm using a Schwaltem? A Schwaltem is a great color for this. So this is going to be a simple float. I'm not going to do anything extravagant, no delicate floats. This is going to look very vintage, so I'm going to put a float of Eschvaltum all around the outside edge of that fur trim, right over that checkerboard, like so. And underneath the beard, like that. And then again, on the, uh, the forward part of it, I want to leave a bright spot in the center of that trim. This is a really quick way to paint up projects for bazaars and church markets and things like that, craft sales. It works very quickly. So, shade the hat. All of the trim gets shaded the same way. Just like so. Now, on the pom-pom, I'm going to leave this edge white. Just so that we have some separation. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the cuff on this. It is not a neat and tidy float. I'm just getting the darkest value towards the outside edge all the way around and keeping the lightest area in the center of that trim. And if you do what I just did and end up with the two floats melding together, you can simply just pat it out. We're going to highlight that anyway, so we'll pop it back up. So I want to deepen this, this one right here. So there we have our shading in place. And while we still have the asphaltum out, we're going to shade the robe the same way. And I'm going to come in right up against that trim with a float of asphaltum, nice and tight, close to the border. And I'm going to do the same underneath the beard. Most of this will be hidden anyhow, but I still like to put that float in in case any of it remains. So there we have. And do the same thing to the hat. Leaving the lightest value at the top of the hat. There we go. And on the sleeve, along the edge of the cuff. Like so. And on the back part of the sleeve, leaving the top part and the forward part the same. Now, no matter what type of paper you use, these are the colors that you would use for this. So it simplifies things. You have a very limited palette and it makes life so much simpler when you don't have to have 500 colors on your palette. So now I've rinsed out my brush and I'm going to shade the Santa's face with the Ishvaltum as well. 
and it's going to be shaded along the top of the mustache. And then in here by the nose, I'm going to shade like so. Just an indentation, it's almost an arrow shape. So there's the curve of the cheek and then up under the hat. Now for his beard, now that we've got the shading on this done and the shading on the face done, we're going to start shading this beard. Now, I like asphaltum on the white, but it looks a little yellow and we don't really want that. So I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray and it's a fairly weak float. You don't need a lot of this color, but you do need some. So a little Payne's Gray on the brush and you're going to float underneath that hat right here and underneath the mustache like so. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom of the beard and do the same thing coming up like this. I'm going to switch to an, a larger angle for this one. And as soon as that's dry, I'm going to take a little bit of asphaltum. I'm going to load the brush, but I'm going to thin it out quite a bit. And I'm going to float right over all of that Payne's Gray with that thinned asphaltum. And I'm going to do the same thing to the mustache. And that thin dish faltum makes all of that texture in the gesso stand out. But it is very heavily thinned. So now we need a little bit of detail on our Santa's face. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of lamp black and I'm using a zero rigger for this. You can use a fine liner, a 10 aught, whatever size you have, but I'm going to give him an eye and it is simply a V and then fill in the V with a little bit of black. Now I have a tiny point blender and I have a little bit of Tuscan red. Gonna have a little bit of red on our Santa. He needs to have rosy cheeks. So I'm going to use my blender. If you have a dry brush, whichever you prefer, I'm just going to load that up. And on the apple of his cheek, just under that eye, I'm going to put a little blush of color. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the tip of his nose. Now there's a final highlight that goes into his eye. And it's just a tiny dot of warm white. And I do the same thing to his cheek, a little dot of white. And now we're going to add highlights all over the place for this one. I'm just going to grab my larger point blender and some warm white. And again, I'm just rouging this out on my palette so the brush is nearly dry. And I'm going to add a dry brushed highlight to the tip of his boot. I'll just make sure you can see what I'm doing here. So nice little dry brush highlight to the toe of his boot. I'm going to do the same thing to the top of his mitten. So on the thumb and the front of the brush, the mitt like that. And this is where I like doing this highlight. I come to the center 
of that robe and I dry brush some warm white just in the center. It does two things. It softens any boundaries from that floating, any harsh lines get softened, but it also brightens that middle a little bit and it gives it a little height. Because we've shaded on both sides, putting that bright highlight in the middle sort of rounds it out a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing to the sleeve, the cuff on his robe, like that. And I'm going to do the same to his hat. Nice little dry brush. Oops, not quite a dry brush. So a little bit there. And then I like to take a little bit of that white in the center of his robe, just to soften things a little bit. Just like that. Now, if there's any areas that you want to punch up highlights on his beard, soften them up a little, you can certainly do that with the dry brush too. It's just going to give him a light, soft, frosted look. And I'll do the same thing on his hat. Right there. So he's come together quite quickly. So from this point, all you have to do is glue those arms in place. Now, I used um, a couple of things to embellish this little fellow. I have these wonderful little wooden stars. And I literally sandwiched a piece of ribbon in the middle between the two. So the ribbon would go in between these two stars, and then you glue the two stars together. And then you can shade them and highlight them any way you choose. So I wanted him to have the stars, but you could certainly glue whatever you wanted to onto him, however you choose. He's going to look great no matter what you do. A little piece of ribbon, a piece of holly, um, a small gift box, whatever you would like. If you wanted, you could actually just drill a hole through this and articulate the arms so that the arms could move. But there you go. That is how difficult this little guy really is. He's just done with a little bit of paper and some very simple painting techniques. You can embellish him any way you choose. I like taking my my gel pen and adding sketchy little lines around the outside edges that just softens things. Little details. Add glitter to this. Whatever you would like. Then you just have to make yourself a hanger. In this case, I just used a little bit of 19 gauge wire to create a hanger for him. Add some glitter, add some varnish, and you are ready to go. That's it, that's all. It's an easy one to do and they're quick to work up. They work up really, really fast. You can even get the kids involved using napkins, using Christmas wrap, using gift paper, tissue paper, scrapbook paper, whatever you have on hand. They're easy, they're fun, and you can customize them any way you choose. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join me every Saturday for a Saturday Live. I will see you again soon. Mwah! Love you. Take it. Stay safe.